One of the best bosses I ever had gave me the job of fixing somebody else's screw-up, and I thought I was being punished. He told me that no, I was the best man for the job, and though this issue was not my fault, it was my problem, and that's why he hired me. That's why this video is about four days late from when I actually wrote it. But that problem has been resolved. I am ready to go, and let's get on it. Welcome to Mastara for a remaster covering of all things the module that inspired this channel. I'm talking about the module B7, Rahazia. Just the name. Rahazia. Rahazia. I know, it just sounds musical. I wanted to see a video on this module all those years ago, only there weren't any. As far as I can tell, my video is still the only one about it. Thus, Welcome to Mastara was born. And now we have a video about Rahazia, a module whose backstory takes up more space than the actual module itself. I'm Mr. Welch, and today we are starting at the beginning, five years later. Rahazia is actually the second module printed in the Basic series in 1979, just ahead of Keep on the Borderlands, but after In Search of the Unknown. So why is Rahazia module B7 compared to the Keep's B2? Because Rahazia wasn't printed by TSR originally. This is the work by Laura Hickman, with her husband Tracy helping write the sequel Black Opal Eye. TSR later merged both books into the Rahazia module we know now. Their game company, Daystar West Media, only produced two models with Rahazia and Pharaoh before going out of business. Then it was absorbed into TSR, which was more interested in hiring the Hickmans than acquiring their past works. You cannot overstate the influence of the Hickmans on D&D game design. Instead of walking into the dungeon and starting to stab people like In Search of the Unknown or Keep on the Borderlands, Rahazia had a plot. You had a strong motivation for being there. TSR was in flux during the early years. Module design changed from fill-in-the-blank, choose-your-own-adventure dungeon crawls like B1 and Palace of the Silver Princess to ones already filled out for you. Then the Hickmans changed it again by actually giving modules a coherent plot, past, kill, loot, heal, repeat. This was the only module they did that ended up in Mastara, but I hear they did some work on other modules that got turned into other lesser-known settings. Something about raven lances and dragon lofts or similar. There are four versions of this module, none of which are Return to Rahazia or anything like the other nostalgia bait TSR was leaning on heavily into the 1990s. The first one, as I mentioned, was created by Daystar West Media, and you aren't going to find a copy. The last one I found for sale went for thousands. Then you have the tournament modules that were RPGA 1 and RPGA 2. Note I said modules, as in plural. Tracy helped write a sequel to the original Rahazia called Black Opal Eye, and both of these were merged to create the B7 version later. Then the module was reprinted again with the compilation In Search of Adventure. The RPGA modules are pretty expensive to buy, also running into the thousands. But you can find a B7 module for a little more than $20 on eBay, and there's always the POD from DriveThru. As I said, this module has a ton of backstory. As with all my remasters, there is nothing but spoilers from here on out, because you want to hear the juicy parts of the book. Besides, it's decades old. The spoiler tag fell off a long time ago. The title of the module is a fair elven maiden whose boyfriend has been kidnapped by the evil Rahib, along with several other ma elven maidens, and she needs you to find him. It's the reversal of the old, your princess is in another castle shtick, and it works reasonably well. You can always try to convince the elf babe he's just not worth it, but that's never worked. If you're interested in what Rahazia means, it's the Indonesian word for secret. The module uses several words from the Indonesian language, though the art doesn't reflect the influence. There's a bit of continuity issue on where the module was placed, as TSR shoehorned the module into Mastara, since the setting didn't exist when the Tickmans first wrote the module. In Search of Adventure says put it in Derekin, but there's no elves around Derekin in that region. And another suggestion was placing it in Karamikos with the Kalari elves. The first recommendation says it's because of the Arabic vibe of the module, but I think the editor of that one didn't realize the module's influence is Indonesian, not Arabic. Minor difference there. Doesn't matter where you put it, you need a place with some elves and a hidden temple. There's no official canon location, and Rahazia never appears again in any book. The theme of the adventure is that looks can be deceiving. Except for Rahazia, she's a total babe, which means she's pure good and perfect in every way. At least that's what you get from your entire five minute encounter with her. That was a significant complaint when I ran this module. She's the title character. Her face is dead center on the cover. The intro makes a massive deal with her letter and your face to face meeting with her. She escorts you to the temple on the next page, wishes you luck, and then goes back to reading the Cimmerillion or whatever elves do when they subcontract stuff. Seriously, she bows out on the second actual page of the adventure. Doesn't even wave goodbye or validate parking. The module setting is a dungeon crawl, as this is a basic adventure, and that's the standard plot for almost every module in this setting. 
This time it's the hidden Siswa temple, with Siswa being the Indonesian word for student. Rahasia tells you beforehand that the Siswa are being mind controlled, so don't kill them. That was a problem back in Bagni because, unlike the more accommodating editions of D&D, knocking people out was a chore. Especially since hit points were much lower, and setting your great axe to stun was a lot trickier compared to 5th edition. Making things even more fun is that the Siswa are elves, so they're immune to the sleep spell. No easy captives for you. The module takes the no-kill rule very seriously. If you forget to mention you are striking to subdue and accidentally kill one, it docks your XP instead of rewarding you. The module can be pretty unforgiving. Several monsters require magic weapons to hit, including a gargoyle that you can encounter early. Remember, this is for levels 1 to 3, but you might want to play another adventure first that gets the party some magic weapons or loot to give them a chance. The fights aren't mandatory if the party plays it smart, but if everyone gets delusions of grandeur at first level, this is going to be a real short adventure. The mooks are numerous, many of them cast spells, and they are all entirely brainwashed. Something that players will have to deal with in Rahasia more than other modules is puzzles. The Hickmans love puzzles. Sadistic, challenging puzzles you have to pay attention to, or you're dealing with a total party kill. Just ask the group I ran for North Texas Tabletop Con a few years back. They had a DM no-show, and I made the mistake of walking past with a rule cyclopedia and a signed copy of Rahasia. One quick Shanghai later, and I was running the module with five minutes of prep time and handcuffed to a chair. The party got impatient, greedy, and dead about two-thirds of the way through the module. The traps and puzzles in this module have been duplicated numerous times. If you've ever played Curse of Strahd, you might remember the puzzle dealing with the Wizard of Wines. This is the module that that puzzle first appeared in. They didn't even change the wine's names. They just scrubbed off the puzzle code on the bottom that appeared in Rahasia. There's a lot of clues and riddles given to the party that are essential to finish the adventure. The party will need to write the clues down when they find them, because you're not going to find them at the actual puzzle. Answering some of the puzzles wrong will result in very bad things. This module is often lethal for players who can't pay attention. The module's biggest surprise is the Rahib isn't the big bad. He's the big bad's deputy. The bigger surprise is there's multiple big bads in the form of the three witches. They possess a pair of comely elven maidens, with the third witch waiting to lure Rahazia into the dungeon so she can be possessed. Killing the elf maidens are a bad thing, and it costs you XP. And worse, it doesn't kill the witches either. The witches return to the magic talisman to hold their souls until they can find a body. If you have a Randy Bard type in the party, keep him on a short leash, or he will get everyone killed. If you haven't noticed, Rahazi is not a starter module. It is complicated, and it is deadly. And just because it's low level, doesn't mean it's noob friendly. If you're running the module, familiarize yourself with it for a few days. The temple is vast, far more extensive than most dungeons of the same level. Compared with the beginner-friendly module, King's Festival, which walks the party through 30 rooms, Rahazi has a staggering 84 rooms. Both of these modules are the same length at 32 pages. Rahazi has almost triple the number of rooms compared to most other basic modules of the same length. Only Lost City outdoes it with 100 rooms, and that's only if you include the lower levels, which are not given any detailed descriptions. The closest module of that size dungeon is Ravenloft, also by the Hickmans, which has 88 rooms. The Hickmans love big dungeons and they cannot lie. You other adventurers can't deny. If you've never run a game before, this is not the module for you. This is for dungeon masters that can keep track of a relatively detailed plot involving lots of NPCs and their schemes, coupled with some rather complicated traps and dozens of rooms, including a very confusing teleport maze. Players have to solve several puzzles without apparent answers, navigate the same teleport maze, and figure out how to get past monsters well past their abilities through guile and furthermore, restrain themselves against large numbers of mind-controlled enemies. It also helps if they know how to map and don't get turned around easily. Hickman modules might be classics, but they didn't pussyfoot around with the difficulty. While I'm warning you about prepping this module more than others, you will need to do something about Rahazia's letter. On older versions of the module, the seal that takes up a large section of the letter behind the message makes it hard to read. Look for online versions of the letter that corrects this problem. The three witches are classic villains that you can reuse for later adventures. They're evil spirits with no physical bodies, meaning they can turn up as anybody later. The Rahib is disposable. His survival doesn't impact the story other than the gratification you get for putting paid to a bad guy. The villains are clever and have laid out numerous traps that will kill off the stupid, greedy, or horny. And the best you can do is banish the witches if you beat the module. They will play to the party's heroism. The large doe-eyed elf maidens they possess will help a lot with that aspect. While they aren't meant to fight the party one-on-one, -on -one, they can sow mistrust because they can possess victims. They can have at least one elf maiden lying around as a backup plan, which can cause all sorts of arguments when the party finds her. This is a tournament module, one from the very early days of TSR. It's meant to be complicated. Party wipes are very possible and almost expected. 
The idea back then was to see how far a party could make it into the dungeon before they wipe, and then compare their progress to everybody else at the convention who also ran Rahazia. Compared to 5th edition's low-level modules, this is a meat grinder, which will turn off players used to the more pillow-fisted modern adventures. There are even die-no-save traps, but to fall for those, you gotta be really gullible. If you go after the obvious bait that this module throws at you, you deserve your fate. Then again, when I got roped into running the module last time, that's where my party wiped, and these were veteran grognards. I expected better, guys. Rahazia is a timeless module, but it's not for everybody. It's very old school being from the 70s and all. It has box text that was the hallmark of early TSR adventures. It can be somewhat confusing if the players don't know how to map, especially with all the teleporting. The trick is the players don't realize they're teleporting. They have to figure it out on their own. The adventure punishes players for idiotic mistakes, and it's unapologetic about it. If your players want a challenge, grab it, but make sure they know what they're in for first. The next remaster is one of the most game-changing adventures of all times, Test of the Warlords. The one that lets you run your own Game of Thrones, only without the rushed ending. So get ready to bend the knees and run your own domain. Until then, remember, your prince is in another castle.